Well, the Benowitz case, you talked about that in detail, so I won't go into too much of it, but that's that's got to be on your mind for all these years. It's been blamed for driving him crazy. That's the story, right? Rick Doty drove that guy crazy. Yes, that was the story that I, uh, I brainwashed him. I fed him chemicals. I mean, I've heard it all. We shot beams in his head. I mean, I've heard everything, and none of it's true. Every, every aspect of that is false. Paul was just was so infatuated with the subject of UFOs that he did this to himself. He was a brilliant but troubled person. Very brilliant and very troubled. He tapped into something, national security programs, that he shouldn't have had access to, that he'd somehow managed to get information about, but he also tapped into something else. You said 60% of the information he was gathering is something beyond. What, exactly. What, what is it? We don't know. We wish we knew. I sent that information up. There were reports made, invest, other investigations done, uh, scientific analysis done. They don't know. They don't know what these uh, uh, UFOs or these objects that he, he that he photographed or how he collected signals, or especially what they were most concerned with was the frequency range. He was collecting frequencies that were up in a high gigahertz that we didn't have at that time period in the 1980s. So it had to come from a an ET source, an extraterrestrial source, not a terrestrial source. You were at Area 51 not once but twice, right? Twice. As a security officer? Yes, Air Force officer. Counter counterintelligence officer. So, so you were protecting legitimate national security programs out there? Yes. There is an aspect to UFOs in those programs, right? Absolutely. And can you, um, how much well, can you say? There's some programs, classified programs that dealt with satellites photographing space-based objects. and now, it could be other satellites, like Soviet satellites or Chinese satellites, but there was also an aspect of that that photographed any kind of space-based objects or crafts in space, unknown. which meaning unknown crafts in space, such as uh, UFOs or uh, extraterrestrial crafts. So that information, as well as the photographs of Paul Benowitz's that you saw that were, it's a flying saucer. Where does that stuff go? <laughs> I wish I knew. It went to headquarters, it went to our headquarters, and from that point on, I would guess DIA has a repository someplace, and it went there. It was very difficult to get anything back that we sent up. Even if we legitimately needed something uh, for maybe a criminal case or something like that, or even a espionage case that uh, the FBI was involved with and they hadn't had access to that information, so we asked headquarters, could you send it back to us so we could brief you know, clear the FBI agents to be briefed into it. They wouldn't send it back. Among your fellow intelligence officers and counterintelligence, is there an understanding of the phenomena or an appreciation for it, or is that also stovepiped, kind of? No, I'm a member of the Retired Intelligence Officer Association, and almost exclusively, although there's some naysayers in a group, there's always naysayers in every group, because they weren't given access to certain programs. But for the majority of the ones that I meet with 30, excess of 30 intelli former intelligence or retired intelligence officers, they all believe this is an absolute real phenomena, UFOs, and that there's some sort of a threat. And it varied upon opinions of, of the different officers, but var varying threats to national security from these objects, uh, from these crafts.